All right. Sorry, guys. Give me a. Uh, can you guys hear me and see my screen? Um, is it clear that my voice is clear and the screen is clear? All right. Um, give me a few seconds before I um continue. Yes. So, just a moment. All right. Um, Give me a second. Okay. So this shall be here. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to another live training session brought to you by Tickmill. All right, so I'm your host for today. My name is Wun Hong and I'm an investment analyst at Everest Fortune Group. And we have a special collaboration with Tickmill to bring you guys the good stuff every week. All right, so um, today's session is very simple. We'll go through the live training session and here is the agenda that we'll be going through. All right, so what can you expect in today's session? Right, we have I'll be going through with you guys key economic news events for this week and to and usually for um the start of the month, right? And since we are in October right now, and we are in the start of October, right? The first week we'll always have our favorite day, which is NFP, which will be happening on Friday, the first Friday of every month. All right. So um yes, later on, don't worry, I'll go through with you guys um the news events, and then we'll be going through DXY. Um, WTI, go and any FX pairs that you guys want me to go through with you, and um, I'll go through the outlook of the different pairs as well as the key levels to watch out for. So just feel free to type in the chat box below what, uh, which FX pairs that you guys want me to, um, go through with you. All right. So firstly, let's go through the key economic news events. All right. So as you can see, for Monday we have the. ISM Manufacturing PMI. Let's change this to, yep, it's GMT. Okay. So it will be happening later on, I think in about, um, I will say less than five hours time, right? We have the ISM Manufacturing PMI. Okay. So this uh, Manufacturing PMI news, above 50 indicates industry expansion, below indicates contraction, right? So um, if the value is uh above 50 right but so far it has always been below 50 which indicates contraction and what contraction actually means is that downtrend right so downtrend for contraction uptrend for expansion okay so just have to pay attention to this news all right so we also have the fed chair power speaking at um 3 p.m gmt so you can see uh, i believe most of you have already do already do know that when um, this important man speaks, right? He'll be talking about interest rates and the economic outlook for the um, US economy itself. All right, so it's a, uh, uh, it'll cause the DXY itself to move either up or down pretty volatile. Um, it'll cause the markets to be pretty volatile, right? And this will cause go if DXY goes up, go goes down, right? As well as Euro USD, GBP USD. Okay. So yes, this is a very important news for the US economy. All right, so for tomorrow, we have the AUD cash rate and RBA rate statement. So very simple, these two news are talking about um, interest rates and how they want to set the rates. So for example, you see um, the forecast is actually 4.1% and it's predicted that the cash rate would maintain at 4.1%, maybe towards the end of the year, then they will increase the rates to, I would say, by 0.25%. Yep. So this is something that you need to watch out for. All right. So, but so far, right, yes, in the past few months, it has maintained at a percentage of 4.1%. All right. So you can predict that if the government decides to maintain the interest rate at 4.1%, then AUD currency would show weakness, right? If it increases, then AUD currency will bloom, 
All right. So the rate statement is just the, the discussion on the um, interest rates itself. All right. So for CHF, right, CHF CPI, okay, CHF CPI is also talking about overall inflation, right? So if the actual data is greater than the forecast, is good for the currency. So as you can see, previous price, uh, previous percentage was 0.2%, right? So, but the forecast right now will be 0.0%. So if the actual data is actually 0.2%, then it will show that you uh, USD CHF. Okay, so very simple. If CHF currency goes down, USD CHF goes up, right? So um, if this news is positive, right? Then USD CHF will go down. So it's just the opposite, okay? So we also have this um, jobs drop openings. So basically it's in a sense the same as, um, I would say the uh, unemployment rate, etc. right? The volatility is about the same because it's about job openings, right? Reported during the uh, month, okay? There you can see right here. Um, it's pretty hard to predict uh, for this time around the um, job openings because it has it's not consistent. But um, DXY, if you see right here, DXY is in a peak right now. Okay, so DXY is actually... Okay, give me a second. Let me just switch this for a bit. Hello, hi everybody. Welcome, welcome. Let me just. Okay, let me just um sign into another account. Okay. Right. Okay, DXY right here. Let me just create a copy. This, right? We don't need all of this. Okay, so let's go to DXY, right? Let's start afresh. Okay, so you can see right here that DXY is could range uh is actually in a range right now it's in a parallel um ascending channel right let me just mark it out for you guys um right parallel channel over here okay so let's label this as green bullish channel right you can see right here that DXY is in a bullish channel right here okay so if it's in a bullish channel right Okay, if it's in a bullish channel, right, then price would most likely rise up all the way here before it drops. Okay, so you just have to be careful for that. So good day to you too. All right. So at this level right here, it could possibly react to this resistance level over here because DXY has already broke um, these highs, right? So it's possible to reach these highs right here. Okay, because if you look at the chart right now, if you are on the daily, you can see that it, it is actually a week, right? It's a very long week right here. And if you notice, right, if it's a week, price will usually tend to be drawn to that week over there, right? You can see right here, if there's a week over here, price was in a downtrend, right? And then it retraced all the way back up just to take out this week right here. And this is your liquidity zones. Okay, so yes, I'm not sure if you guys understand liquidity, but it's a very interesting concept. And it's where the money is at, you know. Okay, so if you understand the concept of liquidity, price will be drawn to these levels where there is where there are very long weeks right here. Okay, so if you were to mark out this area, right, you can see that price would be drawn to here, this level over here, okay? Which actually makes sense if you think about it. You can see right here, if price 
actually respects this ascending channel, right? It will actually do a slight reaction right here and then start to go up. And then once it reaches this area, then it, it will come down. Okay? So essentially, this is what I'm looking at for DXY. So this means, right, if DXY goes up, means Euro USD, GBP USD, and gold will continue to go down. And, it's, and as you can see, gold has been in a very strong downtrend ever since DXY was in an uptrend, right? You see the correlation right here, okay? So this level, right, is a very important level for gold itself, right? Because this is where it actually made, was at a low, and then it bloomed all the way back up to break these highs and then reach new heights, okay? So, and gold has, you can see right here, gold has never really reached that high before, except for during the COVID periods right here. So you can see these highs over here, right? So there's a possibility that price could, that gold could actually react to this level right here, this double bottom over here, and then bounce up. So these levels, this level for gold is something that you need to watch out for. Okay, sorry for sidetracking a little bit. Um, let me just continue uh, going through this. Okay, so very quick, um, just um, hold on for a bit before I go through all the pairs. All right, uh, let me just take a quick look. Okay, so, right, after that, we have the NCD official cash rate. Okay, we have the NZD official cash rate as well as the NZD uh, RBNZ rate statement. Okay, so you can see right here, if I were to open this, right, these two news are very similar to um, the AUD cash rate as well. So it's very similar because if you guys know, yes, Euro USD, okay, sure. So for NZD USD and AUD USD, these two move the same. Okay, and then we also have the ADP non-farm employment change, which is the preparation for our NFP day. Okay, so uh, what we can expect is for DXY to become bearish because it's um, in the highs right now. Okay, so it could become bearish in the long run. All right, to adjust uh, interest rates, etc. Okay, then ISM services PMI is the same as ISM manufacturing PMI. Very simple. Unemployment claims, I'm pretty sure you guys all know about it, which is um, if the actual data is less than the forecast data, is good for the currency. And so far, the actual data has always been less than the forecasted data, which is pretty surprising, given that, um, given that uh, this means, you can see right here, there's only a few times where it actually in this year, Right, there's only been a few times whereby um it has been negative, right? So you can predict it to be positive for. Okay, so lastly, Friday we have the Canadian employment change as well as the unemployment rate. Okay, so for the employment change for Canadian, right, it's also pretty unpredictable, right? If but if you see the trend right here, most of it is usually positive, but we cannot bet on this kind of news, right? So we have to monitor it and Maybe um USD CAD, this will affect pairs like um USD CAD, right? You can see right here, it could possibly be um bearish uh sooner or later, right? But what I'm looking at for USD CAD, right, is actually for price to be sold right here. You know why? Because through my experience, right, if it's in the uptrend, right, and then it starts going down, this and then it it comes like this, right? So what does this look like to you, actually? This looks like a head and shoulders pattern, right? This is your left shoulder. This is your head. This is your right shoulder. Okay? Sometimes I prefer it if price is closer together. But what I'm looking at would be for price to react to this head, the body of the candle, and then go down. So that is what I'm actually looking at for USD cap. But of course, um, if you follow the retail style, right, this is also a possibility, right? Because even though that there's a fake out right here, 
but you can possibly enter here or you can enter right here. So it depends on your personal preference. So it's not a lot if you measure it right here, it's about 50 pips. Yeah. So I would say it's possible to actually enter at the body of the candle. You can use a smaller lot size and then uh, tank the drawdown and then your stops can be placed above these highs right here. Okay, so ideally, this is what I'm looking at. Okay, so if you guys want to enter this trade, um, please do so with caution. All right, let's say I'm on the daily. I will set a sell limit right here. Then this could be my potential sell entry, right? And then my stops place above these highs, above the head. Stop loss, right? Take profit. Where should my take profit be? Wait, let me just measure this right here. All FIPS, right? So you can see at this 78.6% FIBO retracement level. Okay, and if I were to use a, let me see if um, projection, oops. Let me see if projection works. Um, 100%. Okay, it's, it has already uh, bypassed the 100% level. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is essentially what I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah, so my target would definitely be right here. Right, this is essentially my target. So your sales will be right at this area right here. Okay. So I would say here, okay, around here. And then your stop, uh, this will be your take profit, which is your, uh, yeah, which is your pullback support level. So the idea is for price to go up, right? React here, come down and come down here before it, before it could possibly go up, back up and break these highs. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. All right, so just a very quick outlook for USD CAD. All right, so the last one, yep, I wouldn't have to explain much on this. This is your favorite USD NFP day, right? We have unemployment rate, non from employment change, but it's predicted to be positive, right? Because it's not it's not difficult to actually beat this number, which is 168,000. Uh, so if the actual data is actually a 185, 184, is still better than this forecast, which means that DXY will go up. Okay. <clears throat> right, so let's see. Okay, give me a second. Let me see. USDJPY. Uh, Right, I believe there is. Uh, maybe if we don't need MACD, we don't need. Wait, let me see. MACD. Yep, we don't need MACD, we don't need stochastic. Uh, what we need is RSI. So, a potential trade, right, that I'm looking at will be. Oh man, okay, we don't need this. Okay, so a potential trade that I'm looking at is essentially um, the RSI, right? So because when I'm looking at this trade, what can you see right here? Price made a higher height, right? But for bearish divergence, what can we see right here on the RSI? We can see that there is a lower height. So this shows that there is bearish divergence right here and price is actually at a very high price right here. It's impossible for price to actually reach maybe this highs right here. It will take, I would say, another few more weeks. But this, I believe this is the all-time Hi, if I were to say, right? Uh, 
it's really not an all time high, but recent compared to nineteen ninety eight, you already broke the high of nineteen ninety eight. So it's not possible for price to actually break these highs right here, unless there could be positive uh neg I would say negative news for the Japanese economy, but I'm pretty sure price will start to reverse right here sooner or later. Right, so for this trade, my stops is um if I were to go to the one hour, right? It's starting to make um lower highs. Okay. So high highs, higher highs right here on the H4 time frame, lower highs right here on the RSI. Okay, then for my confirmation, I see I see that price is starting to make lower highs. So ideally, what I'm looking at is for price to break. Must it must break at least these lows right here. Okay. And then come back up and then I will enter right here. So this shows me extra confirmation that my trade will be uh, profitable. Okay, so anyways, it's a better entry. If I were to enter, let's say break, right? Then I enter right here, right? And then come down. So this will be a better entry. Around here, stops, place above these highs, right? Very simple, very straightforward. It's just a 11 pip, um, 12 pip stop loss. Okay, then my target, where could my target be? First target to break these lows right here. Okay, then my last target would definitely be the opposing liquidity, which is lying here. Right, remember what I said previously? Price is drawn to liquidity areas. Right, so if we fail to break this, if we once it broke this high, right, then we look on the uh, current price right now and we can see that price is starting to make lower highs okay so uh, essentially we'll probably reach this place around I would say towards the mid of this week towards the end of this week right uh, but this this is just my prediction uh, I could be wrong right because uh, I'm not a perfect trader I definitely lose sometimes too Right, so essentially, I would love to see price um break this level right here. Okay, and then once it breaks this level, right, retest and come down. Then we are good to go. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at for USD JPY. All right, so I have a request to um look at Euro USD. Okay, so let's just reset. Usually, I'll do that. So if I were to take a look at Euro USD, right. Okay, very simple trade right here. I'm looking for price to reach this area whereby this level, between this level and this level is where I will take a trade right here. Okay, but of course we need to dive down to the lower time frame, right? If I were to draw a fit, it will lie red nicely. Um, you can see right here, the body of the candle always works, guys. If you if you pay attention to um everything that I'm saying, right? The body of the candle actually works pretty miraculously, right? You see right here, I didn't have, even have to know. Uh, I just put the price, let's say my buy limit, right? Blindly at the body of the candle right here. And I really can tell that there's a possibility that the 78.6% will lie there. And you can see right here, 78.6% lying right there and it's about um, 30 pips SL. Right, even less than that. So why not? Right, if you know that price could the max that price could possibly reach would be this swing low right here. Right. So if you want to play safe, you can definitely put it between below this swing low right here. Take this out. Right, because this low has not been taken out yet. Right. So we can wait for price to actually take out this low. Okay. So ideally. What I'm actually looking at would be for price to reach this area. And then let's see if I can find any other confluences like projection, etc. Okay, oh let me see 78.6. Okay, so we'll label it. Uh oops, where did it go? 78.6 and 100. Right? So we have 78.6% feeble projection right here. And 78.6% FIBO retracement right here, lying at the place that we marked out for our buy entry. 
extended green box. Please name this as our buy entry. Okay, this one shall be our stop loss. Okay, below this swing low support. Oh, sorry, yeah, this swing low support. As well as, if I were to highlight this area, this is your 100% feeble projection right here. So price will probably hover around, let's say, let's say it breaks past your buy entry, right? It will hover around here before deciding to go up. And then I will say maybe about, this level right here or this level right here before it continues its bearish momentum so you can definitely trade so your take profit level i would say right you can target this area right here as your take profit target right because if you look closely again one hour chart what can you see my favorite pattern head and shoulders right my all-time favorite pattern head and shoulders Right, if you guys aren't clear, click on this button right here for trading view. Click line. You can see right here, it's not super obvious, right? But you can see it looks like a mini little mountain. Right? Left shoulder, hit, right shoulder. Take profit at the right shoulder. Very simple trade. Right? So this is another potential trade that I'm looking at. Okay, so this is my long. Okay, so this is ideally what I'm looking at for Euro USD. Uh, I would say this is about if you put your stops right, uh, right about here at the body, I would say it's slightly risky because you could hit the hundred percent feeble projection level before it reverses up. All right, so I would say place it below this swing low support level right here. Okay, so this is essentially oops, essentially what I'm looking at. Yeah. Okay. So does that answer your question, Emmanuel? <clears throat> okay. So any other? Um. Uh, yes. No worries. You're welcome. Any other um pairs that you guys want me to go through with you? Don't be shy. Just feel free to um send it. Okay. Euro, oh, uh, Rolando, I just went to Euro USD. Okay, GBP USD. Okay, GBP USD. Oh, yes. Okay, so I have a lot of requests for go, right? So, okay, so for go, right? Uh, previously, I had a sell entry right here after it broke, and I went to 15 minute time frame, right? After it broke, then you can see right here. Go always likes to retest key levels, guys. So you have to remember that, right? So on the four hour, right, I saw this move right here. Okay, so just a tip, right? So this was my POI, right? My level, my key level. So I usually don't draw lines, but lines is just for me to mark out um, the body of the candles, right? So I go down to the 15 minute time frame, okay? 15 minute time frame. And then I see that price actually broke past. So I dive down the five minute time frame. Okay. Price broke past. Long rejection week right here. Weaker bearish candles. So what can I expect next? When price came out with bullish candle, almost touching my key level, right? And then enter a bearish engulfing candle. This was my entry. Very simple. Half of the bearish candle. My stops placed above this highs, 41 pips. I, I feel it's pretty decent, right? And my target was at least 2 is to 1, right? So if I hit 2 is to 1, I was out, right? I was out at this trade at up 2%, but I didn't know that price would go all the way down to right here, which is about another 200 pips more, right? So it actually varies from individual to individual. Okay, but anyways, right? If I were to take a look at go again, okay, we can see right here. Just now, like I said, the next level that I'm looking at would be this double bottom right here. And price could definitely react to this double bottom right here. Because why? If I go to the daily time frame, I can see that price, this was where it had a major push upwards this impulse move upwards 
and then breaking these highs, right? It broke these highs and then created new highs until it reached this point whereby it, you know why, uh, guys, do you know why that price reacted to this point, right? Because of these levels right here. It's all in one, if I draw it correctly, it's all in one straight line where it all reacted to this key level right here. So you see, right? tapped and run, tapped, run, tapped. This was the start of it all, right? Created new highs, tapped, run, tapped, run. Okay, so after a very, very bullish run by Go, right? You will always have a correction. So this was this the correction right here. Okay, but ideally, if Go breaks this level, right? The next level that I'm looking at will be here. These are my key levels. So these are my key levels. So I only have three different key levels for gold because I know that gold will definitely, once it breaks a major support level, right, it will continue to dip further. Okay, so there's no point in me trying to buy the reversal upwards, but more of me trying to continue with the downtrend. Okay. So this is my trade for um, gold itself. All right, so I'm looking to buy once price reaches this area. I definitely need to have um, lower time frame confirmation. Okay, and I believe in the second green light that I draw is right at the 127. Yeah, it's about at the 127.2% FIBO extension level right here. So if price breaks this level, right, if price breaks, come back up. Right, remember what I always said. Price will retest major key levels. So if you fail your buy here, then continue the sell downwards. Right, sell here. Stops above here. Targets this low. Right at the FIBO extension level right here. Okay, so usually I will have one buy um limit and one um sell stop. Right, so in case price blows past this area. Right, and then comes back out to retest, then I can trade the down move right here. Okay. Yep, so uh, if you ask me, gold is uh, pretty okay right now, I would say, in a sense that uh, if you mark out the correct key levels, you'll be able to catch um, good trades. Okay, so you just have to be, be very, very careful for that. All right, so for NFP, NFP, right? There are two outcomes, okay? So... This move downwards could be for NFP, right? Because if we refer to DXY, DXY could potentially continue its upward momentum, right? But maybe in during Friday, right, it could come down here. It's too early to tell, you know. There's no way that I, I'll be able to predict how price may react during NFP. But what I can say is the direction of price, right? the possible direction of price, how it may actually end up, where it may actually end up at. Okay. Hope this makes it clearer. Mm, okay, so for GBP USD, let's take a look at that. Okay, GBP USD. All right. So... Let me see. Wow, I have literally no key levels right here. Uh, possible, a possible sell opportunity right here, but price has already reacted off it. So I would say, how many pips is this? Four hours? Four hours uh, from here to this high. Oh no. I would suggest not to enter right now. Um. Okay, so the next key level that we want to look at will definitely be if DXY is able to break this low right here. Okay, so of course, um, if I were to place my high, my low, and my high, right? Price, yeah, this doesn't line up, so I'll take that out. Okay, so price could Possibly, let me see, 50%. Right? 
price could possibly bounce up from here, right? Create a double bottom before going back up. And then you can sell to continue its uh, bearish momentum. Okay, what I'm looking at ideally is for price to reject off this support level. I don't want the candles, for the H4 candles to close below this um, level of support right here. Okay, if it closes below, right, then we are going for the second round, which is close below, retest, and boom, we will enter the retest. Imagine this, if price has a uh, lower high right here, lower high right here right so high lower high okay then my stops place above the lower high okay target place against uh i would say this low right here okay but if you want your stops can be placed right about here half of it 30 pips right your targets right here quick one is to three okay so this is for gbp usd Okay, I uh, hope that answer your question. Okay. Uh, from NCDCAD. Okay, let's take a look at um, NCDCAD. Oh, this is an exotic pair. Okay. All right. Oh. Uh, let me see. Okay, price. Okay, let's see how this um H4 candle closes, right? If it closes as a week, then it's possible to continue its um, bullish momentum, right? Usually, I like to trade uh, retest, right? Because uh, retest is uh, safer, it's a safer option, right? But for, I'm not sure about your trading styles, but I can safely say that if you want to play it safe, you can definitely trade retrace, uh, um, your pullbacks, your um, retest, etc. Okay, so let's see how this candle plays out. But if not, um, let me see. Right here, all fibs. Uh, you can also treat this area right here. I believe on the low time frame, it is a pullback support level right here. Okay, so let's remove the front one out. Put this one in. 23 and 32, sorry, 23 and 38, right? Stops below this 38% level. The stop loss, this will buy entry, right? Uh, I'm not too sure about the, let me see. Uh, nah, okay, let's just remove that. So this will be your take profit target. Uh, I'm not able to draw on projection right now, but if you take a look at this, this is essentially what I'm looking at for buy entry upwards. Okay, but of course, um, you definitely want the candles to close above, right? So if close above, weak, weak, and here. Right, then it could potentially continue its bullish momentum outwards. Okay, so I hope this answers your question. Yeah, so um, just feel free to um, continue sending more trades so that I can analyze for you guys and maybe even find some potential, um, some potential trades, right? No, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a coach. I'm a. I'm just an analyst, but I'm not a coach. But thank you. Uh, what's TLT? Uh, today I don't know what's um TLT. Have no idea. Oh yes, uh, Patricia. Um, I saw that you raised your hand. Um, don't worry. Just um, you can let me know your question. Oh yes, of course I can do. Um, oh yeah, I've done. I have just done EU. 
right? Uh, don't worry, I'll go through one more time later on as a refreshment. And yes, of course, let me go to, uh, what's that? Uh, S&P 500. Oh, uh, okay. No worries. Give me a second. Uh, GJ, GJ, TLT. Oh, yes, GBP USD is done already. GBP. Oh, no, GBP USD not yet. Wait, let me see. I don't know. Yes, actually, index is a way to um for you to learn, right? In index is actually pretty interesting, like Germany 30, um US US 500, SP 500, right? Those are those are the more interesting ones, right? The fast moving ones. Okay, so GU, okay, GU, S&P 500. Okay, let's take a look at oil first, right? Okay, so for oil, okay, um, for oil itself, right? Uh, previously, I didn't uh, trade oil at all, but it, I find it pretty interesting how it actually moves a lot based off news, right? Okay, so... Essentially, what I'm looking at would be this area right here. I think it's about the 23. Yep. But the 23% has already been crossed. Okay. So let's just leave it as that. Oh, okay. Very, very good question. Okay. So, uh, so we... I'm pretty sure all of you want to know. Um, let's just sidetrack for a little bit. So I'm pretty sure all of you guys want to know. Um, let's say um we have a question. When we analyze the forex factory news after, then how come to know how can we know that the market goes up or down? Okay, very simple. Let's say you're trading after the news, right? Um <clears throat> let's say after the news, because <clears throat> Uh, I'm not sure if you guys actually believe in market manipulation, right? But there's always market manipulation um, for all we know, right? So, for example, like what I always say, right, to um, everyone that uh, I teach, right, that price will always be drawn to opposing liquidity. Let's say, let me just give you guys a tip, right? So, we have this thing called Q-Zone, Okay. So Q zone sessions. Oh my gosh. Um let's just take Mac, let's just take this MACD out. Okay. Q zone. Let me just give you guys an example. Okay, Thursday, Friday. Why is it not loading? Let me see settings. Okay, so usually let me give you guys an example, right? Um Oh, maybe this may be a bit slightly confusing, but sessions, uh, sessions. Okay, let's say we have different sessions. Okay, so different sessions. Okay, let me just explain to you guys um in layman's terms, okay? So let's say a news, right? Let's say we have, let me just take into example, um, when it was the previous, uh, let me see. NFP. September 8th. September 8th, 8.30 p.m. September 8th, 8.30 p.m. Okay, September 8th. Uh, September. Ooh. 
Where is it? September 8th. Sorry, just give me a second. Let me just... 12.30 p.m. GMT. I think it's right here. 12.30 p.m. GMT. Okay. Right here. 12.30 should be here. Okay, 12.30. All right. So here is where price started to go down. Okay, because... Let me see. Previous... Oops. Give me a second, guys. Let me just filter it out. Okay, employment change. It's, ah, September 1st. Oh my gosh. Okay, 12.30 p.m. September 1st. No wonder it was a little bit weird. All right, September 1st. It should be this move right here. Okay, so you can see right here, the on September 1st, right, the results was actually positive for the DXY currency. Means that DXY will go up, right? So, if DXY goes up, gold will go down, right? So let's say for gold, um, September first, yep, it should be right about here, where right here this move, yep, September first, right? This is the part where gold actually goes down, right? Because we know that DXY actually goes up, then gold goes down, right? So after let's say after this whole move, right, where will price hit to? So let's go to. September 1st, which is probably around here. Okay. So at this point of time, right, you can see right here, price actually already reached a high. Right here. So where can we predict where price will go to next? Right. You see right here, always adapt and not predict. Okay. So here, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. What does this look like to you guys? Are you to think for this a little bit? And then what's my what's my favorite pattern? If you guys pay attention earlier, it's head and shoulders pattern, right? If you guys answered it yourself, good for you. And you are correct. Okay. So you can see right here. And I know this is gonna be a bearish trend because hit a resistance level right here. Okay, head and shoulders pattern. What can we look for next? Right? Re-entries. Okay, so let's say I miss this whole pattern right here, right? So if I were to draw Right at the length nine, what can I look for? I can look for price to retest, right? Every time price for go breaks, it will retest, right? You miss this, it's fine, right? You have another opportunity right here. You have another opportunity right here, right? So don't be afraid to um. Don't be afraid to to find out. Okay, you, you definitely will have an idea of where price will hit to after the news, but you may not be right 100% of the time, right? There hasn't been anyone that I've met that was able to uh, predict price 100% of the time. Okay, so definitely you have to be careful for that. Okay. All right, so let me see. So, uh, yeah, I hope this answered your question. So, always adapt to, uh, on, oh, and right, yes, only trade after the news, please. Um, I don't, I, I would not want to see any of you guys blow accounts because um, for me, right, um, usually for me, I if let's say I, I would love to try out news, what I'll do is I'll buy a small little account, maybe like, I would say 50 USD, 100 USD, right? And then I'll just, my what I would love to do, uh, what I have been doing with my friends is that um, every time when there's NFP, right, we would um, just pump 100 USD into a live account and then just full margin that live account. I mean, it's not recommended. Um, it's definitely not recommended for you guys to do that, but it's just out of um, curiosity, right? and um, see whether our pre predictions are correct. But uh, for amateur traders, it's best to adapt to the market rather than 
predicting where price will go. Okay, so that sometimes, you know, your instincts will tell you, oh, maybe this is a sell, right? But your technical analysis tells you otherwise. So always follow your te technical analysis instead. So, I mean, sometimes you can follow your gut feel, right? But the factuals, the, the facts are always um, more or less correct. Okay, so now let's take a look. Uh, no. Um, okay, there's sometimes um, slippage, right? But the slippage is not um, too much, right? Because uh, maybe like, let's say uh, I, I'll pump 100 USD, then the slippage will be like $5 or something because my lot size is maybe like, I'll spam 0 0.01, like a lot of 0 0.01s. And then, yeah, so the slippage is not, it's not a, a whole lot size of it. Right, it's more of um, it's not like let's say five lots on a hundred dollar account. It's more of a many zero point zero ones. So oh, and try to use, and Tick Mill has very like excellent spreads. Like if you ask me about it, like excellent spreads. So um, you, the spreads are crazy on on EU right. Uh, on Go is very low. EU I think for Tick Mill is like zero 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 spreads right um then for gu maybe um 0 0.3 max right for some brokers is definitely more so you just have to um take note of that all right so uh us oil okay let's go through us oil and then we shall go through s p 500 okay so that's for the future people that trade futures all right so we can see right here if I was to just take a look at oil, right? I can see right here, oil created a low right here, created a lower low, right? High, lower high, lower high. Okay, so very simple. My prediction will be that oil would break this area to break this low, then go back up and come down here to take out where? Liquidity area right here. This is where liquidity was resting. Okay, so price could definitely reject off this 23.6%. Uh, oh, I don't do um, ticker TLT because I don't really um, trade um, those. What, what is that? Is that a future? But I'm, I'm not too confident for that. So, I mean, I can take a look at it, but I don't really trade ETFs much. Right, but of course... Um, I can try, you know, if it if um, you don't mind, I can try. Okay. Okay, so price could definitely reach this liquidity area. But you, you can see right here, right? If I were to dive down to the 15 minute time frame, right, you can see bearish uh, reaction right here already, right? So you can see right here, yeah, definitely coming down. Right, our first obstacle will definitely be this area right here, where that where price will struggle to break this low. Okay, so yeah, I think, yeah, just now I entered a trade for oil because I saw a opportunity. Uh, is I think it's pretty, doing pretty good right now, <laughs> surprisingly. Okay, and yeah, uh, let's, yeah, so this is the direction for oil. Um, I did it, this is my first, uh, my entry was about here. I think it was slightly later, 90.62, I think it was around there. Uh, sell entry, right, sell entry, oops, stop loss, place above this highs, take profit, right here, okay, then this shall be our sell entry. Alright, so it's a pretty simple trade if you ask me. Um. No, we can't do projection. Okay, yeah. So this is my sell entry for oil. All right. So yep, yeah, those that are in oil, um, just take note of this. Um. Okay, let me see other trades. Um. S and P five hundred. Uh. S and P five hundred. Yeah, I think it's US five hundred, right? Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so just now I actually did a analysis already for S and P five hundred. So it's pretty simple. Uh, let me draw the feeble. Okay, so uh, I would say my buy entry right is right here at this signal support level right here. Okay, right at this sixty one point eight percent feeble retracement level. All right, and as for my stops, my stops is um for S and P five hundred. Usually, I would like to put my stops slightly bigger. Because and my lot size smaller because it's more I know where the usually sometimes I know where the direction will go, but it just keeps my stop loss, right? So why not just make your stop loss smaller? And then <clears throat> uh, sometimes let's say if I put it too tightly, for futures, the best is that um you give more space for your uh for price to actually fluctuate. Okay, so this shall be my stop loss, right? Then my tick profit. Right here, not too greedy, right? My tick profit target will be right here. Okay, this is my buy entry. Okay, so let me see. Right, Andy. Yeah, either this area right here where price would react to. This is my buy entry. Okay, very simple, very straightforward long okay this is for us 500 <clears throat> all right okay so we have time to only do one more let's do the uh i don't let's see is it this i think it's this right tlt Oh, it's, oh no, this is too messy. It's impossible to trade this. Um, no, I'm sorry to say this is impossible to trade. But what I can say is, there are, so, there are just too many gaps, right? Um, yeah, there are just too many gaps. This is too messy, so I will dodge this. I wouldn't trade this. Yeah. Uh, let's see. NQ one. What is NQ one? Oh. Yeah. Today I think it's best if you dodge um TLT. It's not looking too good. <laughs> yeah. So. Unless you're already in TLT, like you hold stocks or something, then um by but I one one look and I know that you should dodge that. It's not very healthy. Let me see. Yeah, wait, hold on. Oh, is it this? Is NQ1 NASDAQ? Is it NASDAQ? Oh, okay. NASDAQ moves the same as um US 500, by the way. Okay, so very simple. Firstly, draw your feeble. Very clear. Okay. Right smack in the middle, I can tell this is already at the 50% feeble retracement level. Boom. 50% retracement level. And what we can look for is for price to actually react off this 50% FIBO retracement level. Buy entry. Okay. Your stops. 50 and 61. Right. Your stops will be placed below this 61.8% FIBO retracement level. Okay. Stops right here. If you, if you want to, you can put your stops right here too. But I would prefer to put it maybe slightly around here. Okay. Stop, stop loss. Your take profits back at this high right here. Okay, then this shall be your take profit level. Let's try to draw a feeble 78.6%. Boom. Right here. This is your trade for NQ1. Your NASDAQ. Yeah. 
this is what I'm looking at for NASDAQ. Okay, I, I mean, ideally, this is what I'm looking at. Okay, yeah. All right, so, yeah, thank you for um tuning in, guys. Uh, appreciate the attention and the um engagement with me. All right, so that's all for this live training session. I hope you guys um actually learned some a thing or two, and uh actually plotted out some um uh key levels as well. Okay, so thank you for um listening to um my presentation. And I'll see you guys in the next live training session where if there's an opportunity, all right? So take care, trade safe, and stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.